No matter how much politically incorrect the term circus freak is today, it wasn't that long ago that freak shows in the circus were a thing that people not only went to but enjoyed a lot. In today's video, we're going to see 11 circus freaks that actually existed. Are you curious to see how weird things can get? Well, you better stay with us right till the end. First, it's Ella Harper. Imagine making the whopping amount of $200 a week back in 1880. But in order to get that, imagine everyone saw you either jump from surprise or horror or recognized you as the famous camel girl. Yeah, we wouldn't make that deal either. Ella wasn't given a choice though. She was born with the ability to bend her knees backwards, which she did, and it made her look like a camel. When she gathered enough money from the circus, she retired from show business and got married. In order to get the money faster, the camel girl would pass a card around in her performances that would say, I'm called the camel girl because my knees turn backwards. I can walk best on my hands and feet as you see me in the picture. I've traveled considerably in show business for the past four years and now this is 1886 and I intend to quit the show business and go to school and fit myself for another occupation. Let's admit it, we'd probably give her all our money too. Number two is Myrtle Corbin. Myrtle, a 13-year-old lady from Texas, became known as the four-legged girl when she worked in the circus. Want to guess why? Well, you're probably right. She indeed had four legs. She was born with an unusual number of pelvises, which was two, and each of them had two legs. The two outer ones were normal size, while the two inner were smaller. Until Myrtle retired at the age of 18, her popularity was so big, other circuses hired fake four-legged girls just to cut more tickets. Since the audience was was in love or in awe with her. After she retired, she married and had four daughters just like her legs. Yes, that was a bad joke. We'll leave it right there. Number three is Robert Huddleston. Robert was known as the Pony Boy. He wasn't a huge lover of horses who did elaborate tricks with them on the circus. No, 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 no. He was actually a pony boy. What does that mean, you might wonder? Well, we'll tell you now. Robert suffered from back knee deformity, which meant he couldn't stand up and had to go around on all fours. Before he became a circus star, he actually worked as a team member of a logging team and hauled trees. Why is that important? Not only because it's just plain weird, but because it gave him super duper arm strength. We can't help but think that maybe he'd be a good match with Camel Girl, but that's just us being goofy. How you holding up so far? Well, we hope that you're not weirded out yet, because what's coming is going to make you think all of this was just normal. And if you subscribe and leave a comment saying, I subscribed, I will personally reply to your comment. Are you ready to go? Number four is Isaac Sprague. Isaac was normal up until he was 12 years old. After that, he couldn't keep weight to his body, and no, it wasn't a dream come true because he could eat whatever he wanted and never gained any weight. It was actually a never-ending nightmare with visit after visit to doctors. And imagine this, when he died at the age of 46, he weighed 43 pounds. If you don't know your pounds, that's 19.5 kilos. If you still can't imagine it, that's about the weight of a five-year-old kid. And after seeing he couldn't do anything about his weight, he just started working as a circus freak and gained the nickname, The Living Skeleton. Ugh. Number five, Stephen Bobrowski. If Belle from Beauty and the Beast saw this guy, she'd fall madly in love because we're talking about real life and not a fairy tale Stefan. This guy suffered from super rare werewolf syndrome and he got to be a circus freak instead of turning into a prince. He started off his career at the age of four, toured all over Europe, then some in America, and managed to learn to speak five languages and have everyone that met him swear he's one of the most intelligent people ever. So maybe the real world ladies liked him as well. We just hope they weren't waiting for him to turn into a prince after they kissed him because they would have been disappointed. Well, we're in the middle of the video, so it's the perfect time to tell you. If you enjoy watching these, then you'll definitely enjoy watching more. And all you have to do is visit our channel. What do we ask in return? Nothing. Not a thing. Nada. Although, a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel and turning on your notifications, well, it wouldn't hurt a thing. Now let's continue. Number six, Willie and George Muse. Willie and George Muse, otherwise known as the men from 
not Muse, the men from Mars. They were two brothers from Virginia that were black and albino. This rare combination and oh so politically incorrect made the brothers work as circus freaks after they'd been abducted from their home in Virginia by bounty hunters. When their mother finally found them, she sued the circus that had accepted them, but the brothers actually kept working there. They had become such a sensation, they were making a lot of money. They lived to be 78 and 108, so they lived good long lives, and we hope very good lives. Number seven is Susie. Susie became known in the 1920s as the Elephant Girl because she had ichthyosis. Even though the name would suggest something that has to do with a fish, it's actually caused Susie's skin to thicken, crack, and turn gray. And as you can imagine, people who saw her thought her skin looked just like an elephant, hence the name. Susie, who in the beginning of life wanted to hide her condition, ended up gaining a lot of money from the circus when she performed as a freak. Not a very bad deal, we'd say, given the hand she was dealt, or more like, the body she was dealt. Number eight is Edouard Bupri. Now, what would our list of circus freaks be if we didn't include a giant? Edouard was eight feet tall, which is to say, uh, he was kind of tall, even for a giant. He performed in circuses, but he was also a wrestler. And we really, really want to see the face his opponents have when he steps into the ring and they encounter him. Just to be in the corner and see the face, you know? Okay, let's stop the stupid daydream about laughing with the misery of others and move on. Edward, while he worked in the circus, had a signature move, and he would lift a horse and hold it on his shoulders. We don't know where he could have taken his career, but he sadly died of a pulmonary hemorrhage at the super young age of 23. Well, we have churned right down to the top three, and if you're wondering what could be even more weird than what we've already talked about, you're in for a surprise, because let me tell you, as always, we've kept the best for last. Number nine is Grady Stiles. Grady suffered from extrodactyly, a disease that meant his hands and feet weren't shaped like ours, but like claws. And he wasn't the only one. His whole family, six generations back, were born this way. Grady made a career out of his deformity and worked as a circus freak. But unlike some of the other people in our list who managed to make money and live a happy life, Grady went down a dark road. How dark, you might wonder. Well, do you really want to know? Well, listen, he killed his daughter's boyfriend, hopefully not with his own hands, because, I mean, that's nightmarish. And he was later murdered in cold blood by a hired assassin who was employed, get this, by his own family. Ouch. Grady was known as the Lobster Boy. Not a happy ending. Not sure he deserved a happy ending either, but, you know. Number 10, Fanny Mills. Nowadays, if you have a super rare genetic disease, the best you can hope is to become an Instagram star and do the rounds of the internet or gather money for a good cause. But back when circuses were a big thing, a super rare genetic disease meant you could be a most excellent circus freak. And that was the case with Fanny. This lady was born with a swelling disease that was called lymphedema, which caused her feet to get so big she wore a size 30 shoe. Convert that in your metric system and you'll know how big her feet really were. Number 11 is Mirin Deho. We don't know if this guy was an actual magician, an illusionist, or just plain invincible, but what we do know is Mirin Deho was not ordinary. He was famous for piercing himself with swords, obviously without dying, and also swallowing sharp things like glass and razor blades. Deho was saying he was sent to Earth by God to prove to people there's something better out there. He even managed to stun the medical community, which couldn't find an explanation as to how he could sustain the trauma to his body. Even bullets in the head never stopped him from living his life. But what did stop him, though, was the complication of swallowing a needle. Even though he initially survived it, some days later he lay on a bed, went into a trance, and died three days later. What a crazy story. And there you have it for today, the 11 circus freaks that actually existed. And now it's time to hear from you. Which one shocked you the most and why? Let us know in the comments. And if you haven't already, don't forget, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.